a probability distribution table right here. Let's take a look at the description. We use the table to answer these questions. The annual income distribution of a local supermarket customer is recorded in the following table. The midpoint of each income is included. So the random variable x represents the midpoint of each income range. All the incomes are in thousands so for example, the first midpoint is 10. So that means in within the income range, we have 10% of the shoppers, they earn $10,000 a year. So $10,000 a year, I know that it's not realistic. Uh, it's, our purpose is not, you know, deciding whether that is realistic or not, we want to practice. So we have a random variable x, x represent money, income, and then each x has an associated probability. So 10 has a probability 10%, 20 has a probability 16%, 30 has a probability 29%, so on and so forth. So the question A is, using the income B point and the percent shoppers, do we have a valid probability distribution? Explain your reasoning. So number one, each percentage is between 0% and 100%, so they are all valid probability. And then second of all, every x has its own probability, so that is a second check. And then the third check is they add up to 100%, so I, I, I know they add up to 100%. If you don't believe, if you don't believe me, you can uh, try that really quick. All right, so that will be A, and then B is use a histogram. Use a hist Okay, use a histogram to graph the probability distribution. All right, so let's do that. So we use a histogram. So there is a vertical axis. And then there is a horizontal axis. So that this one, I will be using the midpoint. So the first midpoint is 10 and then 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, right? So they are the midpoint. Can you tell me the label of the horizontal axis? That is a income. And then what about the vertical axis? So that will be the percent of shoppers, right? So percent of shopper. All right, how tall is the first first bar? The first bar is uh, 10%. Wh which one has the tallest bar? The 40, the 40 has the tallest bar. So the first one is a uh, 10%. So this will be um, 10%. So 10% and then 16%, a little bit taller than that. Okay, my scale looks so bad because I want to make every single bar has the same width. It's all right, just a sketch. And then 29%, so that is way taller, 29%. So that will be 29% and then 35%. So 35% and then a 2%. Oh, 2%, not 20%. We have a 2% and then we have an 8%. All right, so that is a sketch. And then what do you see? So in this picture, I can see that most most shoppers, they earn $40,000 and $30,000. So the income range of most of the shoppers, they are around thirty dollars to $40,000 per year because the tallest bar are right there. And then that answer B and then in part C, you have to find the expected income, all right, around that and run your answer to the nearest integer. So how do you find the expected value? So we have the expected value, C, this is B. C is the expected value of random variable X. So that is the sum of X times its own probability. So the first X is 10 probability, don't, don't say 10 times 10, 10%. 10 10% in decimal is not a tough question, right? 10% means 0 0.10. And then uh, 20 times 0 0.16 and then uh, 30 times 0 0.29, and then uh, 40 times 0 0.35, and then 50 times 0 0.02, and then 60 times 0 0.08. So you add them up, uh, the answer is equals to 30. I have a note at the very last line, so the expected value is equals to 33. What does that mean? That means if you pick a customer randomly in that supermarket, my best guess is that customer earns $33,000 per year, which makes sense because 33 is like, look, look, look at the picture, it's like right around there, right? So that is where most people are, where most people's income 
in incomes fall in fall into so 33 makes sense you pick one customer randomly that person earns thirty-three thousand dollars per year totally makes sense and then the next one that i would like to find is find the variance and standard deviation so notice i gave you the answer so let's do the writing part first and then i will show you how to use a calculator to get all the numbers so using calculator the benefit is it doesn't matter how long the table is it doesn't matter how weird the decimals are so as long as you know that skill you can find the mean variance and expect it that I mean the expected value variance and standard deviation without writing a single number down on a piece of paper all right let's do the hand handwriting first and then b is the variance so what is the formula the formula is you have a sum of x minus the expected value square and then divided by probability so by the way the ex is also called a mu 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 is a Greek letter that stands for mean uh, expected value long-term average all right so we have the first x that is a 10 minus 33 square times uh, 10 percent and then plus 20 minus 33 square times 0 0.16 percent and then the next one is 30 minus 10 square times 0 0.29 yes i know the data is not realistic because i want to make the number nice we are not trying to use realistic data. We are learning how to find the mean variance and standard deviation. And then a 40 minus, uh, wait, 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 mi minus 33, 33. Why do I say 10? Minus 33 square. The probability of uh, 40% is 0 0.35. And then um, we have a 20. Fifty minus thirty-three square times zero point oh two, and then sixty times zero minus thirty-three square the result, and then times zero point oh eight. So overall, what do I get? One sixty-three point eight. So overall, the variance is one sixty-three point eight. Uh, the result is in thousand dollar square. So result is in thousand dollar square how come the dollar is square because uh, there is a square you use a money minus money square then you get a dollar square and then the last one is a standard deviation so you take the square root of the variance 163.8 what do i get i said uh, we have a 13 right so we have a 13 so that means um on average a randomly selected customer earns thirty three thousand dollars per in, in in a year and then the interval estimate is you plus or minus 13 so you have 33 minus 13 so that is equals to uh 20 and then 33 plus 20 13 so that is a 46 so this is an interval estimate so that means if you select a customer randomly my best guess is this customer's income range is between 20 and $46,000 per year. That makes total sense because most people, they are around this range, right? They are around this range. So it makes sense to say most people are on that income range. So that will be all in that. That's all for the writing. So now let's do the calculation. All right. So, uh, I forgot to put the screenshot right here, but uh, try to follow, try try your best to follow this calculator. If you want a screenshot of uh, how do you how to find these three numbers, watch the previous video. The previous in the previous video, I gave you a full detail. So this one, this one. So the first thing that you will like to you will have to do is, okay, it looks like I need my uh, numbers right here. So we have to enter the data first. Okay, you go to step. And then add it the first one add it and then do you see that there are some old data because they are from the previous problem i don't need them anymore i am going to clean them up so you put the cursor on l1 and then hit clear and then hit enter and then move the cursor to l2 clear enter on l3 clear enter on l4 clear enter and then l1 x goes to l1 10 20 30 40 50 60 so double check your data okay and then l2 are uh, the percentage but you have to convert that to decimal so 0 0.10 0 0.15 0 0.20 0 0.25 0 0.30 0 0.35 0 0.40 0 0.41 0 0.42 0 0.43 0 0.44 0 0.45 0 0.46 0 0.47 0 0
port two. Port no 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 no. Looking at the wrong place. Ten percent, sixteen percent, twenty nine percent, and then thirty five percent, and then two percent, and then eight percent. O eight. So O eight O two thirty five twenty nine sixteen ten. All right. And then what goes to L3? The L3 is the product of L1 and L2. So you have to put your cursor on L3 and then watch this. So L3 is equals to L1 times L2. So why don't you type L1, which is second, and then you type one, and then the multiplication symbol, and then second two is L2. But before you press enter, make sure the cursor is on top of L3, on L3, not the first slot, on L3 because we are doing this for every single row. So if that is the case, then you hit enter. Then you have all the products. So 10 times 0.1 is 1, 20 times 0.16 is 3.2, 30 times 0.29 is 8.7. So that you get all the products, right? And then now the expected value, watch my writing. So the expected value, so you have to go to the home screen and then you have to calculate the sum of L3. So first you go to second, mode second mode do quick second mode and then you go to second and then you hit the stat because you want to go to the list you want to do math for the whole list so second stat and then do you see on the math option you have a sum number five you have a sum you click that and then you store uh, the products in l3 so second three and then close the parenthesis press enter so you have expected value equals to 32.7 and I round it up to a 33. So that means on average, most people earn $33,000 per year. Okay, so we just got the expected value. So it's 33. I use an uh, integer for uh, my convenience. If you say 32.7, you get four credits. But for if, regarding the rounding, if you do homeworks online, you have to look at the system you have to look at what they're asking for are they asking for the exact value or they are asking for an, an integer you have to read okay next variance so we go back to step and then go back to edit so this time i will be using my l4 so what is our variance look at what you wrote you take the x which is l1 subtract the expected value so let me on l4 okay on top of l4 are you there on top of l4 you use a parenthesis you take x which is second one l1 subtract the expected value that you just got close parenthesis did you close parenthesis did you if not you are making a huge mistake close parenthesis all right close parenthesis and then square so you square the entire difference and then you multiply multiply what you multiply probability, which is in L2. Are you ready? Enter. So there you go. You have the product of every ingredients in the variance. So do you see that we have all the multiplication? So 10 minus 33 squared times 0.10 is equals to 52.9. And then the last step is you want to take a sum of that. So that means you have to second mode first. You have to find a sum of L4. So second mode, and then let me teach you a shortcut right here. Do you see that there is a sum L3? That was the previous entry, right? So instead of going to, um, I, I will just show, show you the, 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 the second step first. So second step, and then math, you pick number five, and then L4, right? Close parenthesis, then you get 163.8. So that is your variance. So let me teach you that super shortcut. So do you see that the previous entry is L4 and then the previous one of L4 is L L3. So you click second enter. Do you see that the previous one just pops up? And then second enter again, the previous one pops up. So that tells me if you are super lazy, so you can just go find the L3 and then you move the cursor on L3 and then I hit second four. So that L, once you do that, the L4 replace the L3, overrides the L3, and then you click enter. So you don't have to go back to second stat and then math sum again. So that one, you can do a quick shortcut. And then the last thing, square root of that. Da, 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 
12.79, so I round it up to 13 for my convenience. So using standard deviation, you can create an interval estimate. So which means you are using a set of number to estimate one number that is way better than using uh, expected value to estimate one number. So what is the expected value? By the way, the expected value is a long term average. So if you do this experiment many, many times on average, you get a 33. All right. So that will be the end of this video. In the comment section below, write your message. Tell me how was the lesson. If you like it, subscribe, like, share, appreciate your help. I see you all in the next one. Signing out.